What are you drinking there? What, the morning coffee there, Dion? That would be Parisi's. Parisi, I'll give a, a shameless plug. Parisi Coffee. Uh, my sister-in-law works there. Their Italian roast. It's fantastic. Um, I do. I am a little bit of a weenie. I, I put my uh, um, vanilla, French vanilla creamer in it. So I don't necessarily drink it black, but it's very good. I highly recommend the Parisi Coffees. Not a sponsor. I drink, if I drink coffee, it would be like a gallon of creamer in there. Not yeah. Coffee. You know, my, my family on, on my dad's side, mostly lovely people. Um, but, uh, they would, you would go to their house and it was black coffee and cigarettes all day long. I mean, I, I'm telling you, it was, six. <laughs> oh man, I tell you, I went over there to, to do some work on my grandmother's house, uh, with my dad and we're drinking, you know, I'll, I'll drink two cups a day. That's it. Maybe a third, but I don't brew that much. I brew enough that I'm going to drink. I was about five cups in that day on a Saturday doing some plumbing <laughs> work over there. My hands were shaking. Cause it was black and strong and, you know, I was like, I don't know how you do it, but uh, yeah, there, you know, s- sadly uh, with that type, those type of habits, we've had some uh, younger than <laughs> expected losses on that side of the family. Oh, but, uh, oh, but uh, no, I mean like hats off to my dad. He had his heart attack and didn't smoke again. That was 20 years ago. So he, you know, good. He, he did, he did stop that. And uh funny fact is he had pancakes the morning of his heart attack. I uh, didn't eat pancakes for about four or five years. That's good too. I would, I would think. Well, yeah, but I think I think that just the thought of that day, I might not. Ever. <laughs> he did say he did say one day he was down in the garage and he was frustrated about something, and he's like, ah, oh, I, I think I got some cigarettes around here somewhere. And it was about six, eight. I don't think it, was, it may have been almost longer than that. And he went and looked and he found a pack, but it was empty. So that was like his one weak moment, and he and he didn't. Uh, so I've got this at my desk. It's some butter for popcorn. That's popcorn. That's, well, there. you're in the man cave. Yeah, my, yeah. my son, yeah, my son or daughter has been um, watching some movies down here or something like that. They get any Andor time in? They're uh, Star. Are they Star Wars kids or uh, more Marvel kids? They've uh, they've watched the Star Wars all once, but Marvel is uh, yeah. If they're gonna nerd out, it's gonna be to Marvel. Uh, we're trying. Unfortunately, at the pace we started, we will we'll never catch up because we've watched like four movies. And since we've started, I think they've made three more. So we're falling behind. You pick up the pace a little it, bit. It's tough. It's tough in the, in the, we didn't do it enough in the summer. Uh, it's tough in the fall because, you know, you lose a Friday night in there. And then a lot of the times in the winter, I'm doing work on Friday nights for Spectrum. So we lose that night too. So it's like Saturday night's kind of the movie night and, and you got to be, you got to be, and he's not totally into them. So he's, he's struggling a little with Andor too because it's kind of, it's kind of slow going and, you know, they're, it's a brand new character and size, you know, Obi-Wan he was into. But uh, I think you got to. Uh, I I think Andor's very good. I've only three episodes in, but uh, it's yeah, you, it's more on the nerd side, sure, uh, of of Star Wars. But it's very. I mean, it's not like it's you know nerdy people doing. It. I mean, Diego Luna is an outstanding actor, and the guy who's the showrunner doing the script is you know been Oscar nominated. And I think it's Tony Gilroy. Is that right? D- done a lot of great stuff. So there's your, there's your movie nerd moment. Uh, that being said, it's tough to top Obi Wan Kenobi. <clears throat> That thing was unbelievable. I, I mean, um, I, I if you want to nerd that. out on that, you haven't seen that? No, oh, I won't. I won't. One. We won't do spoilers in. There's only six episodes, and and it's as as well done as any movie they've done. Um, it's it's fantastic from episode one through episode six, and it's it, it's it'll blow your mind in some spots. It's pretty good. I feel like we're stalling here, Dion, because you, <laughs> you last week was such a bad week of high school football in Kansas City. Is that why? Uh, yeah, you know, it, it just, it's one of those, it's a, it's a middling week. It, you know, weeks five, six, seven are the, are the grind. I mean, you, the first three, four weeks, everybody's excited. You know, the season started. There's a lot of yeah. hope. Five, six, seven is you're kind of the team you are. Um, things can change. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, you can get hot at the end. And I've seen plenty of teams do that. I, a Harrisonville team a few years ago fumbled the ball seven times at Platte County, I think in week four and went on to win a state championship. We, we do know the well-documented history of St. James last year, starting the one four and not losing again at the same time, you know, Blue Valley North started three and O and haven't won a game since uh, last year right. in week three. So it's the middling weeks are the grind weeks because now it's like you get the last two weeks, you're starting looking at brackets, starting looking at places where who's, who's going to play in that first round of the playoffs, be it the Missouri side in the district, you know, the 18, you know, five, six, seven, eighteen districts 
or on the Kansas side where you got one through 16, where you have some just brutal games. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. As you would know, as being a one seed or a two seed in your side as being a Mill Valley fan. So weeks five, six, and seven are the tough weeks to get through. You know, there's good games in there. I mean, last week we did have Aquinas Miege, and I was on the wrong side of that. I thought Miege was going to get that win, and hats off to Aquinas to come through on that and, and down 20 to nothing. And come yeah, back so and say, let's win. start there. I mean, that, that's that that's the game from last week that was uh, a a great game and b kind of a surprise, right? Because uh, Aquinas in the previous two weeks had shown um, that they can be beat because they were beat, and then Bishop Miege just rolled through the season. And in those last couple of weeks, they had had that common opponent of Rockers, where Bishop Miege handled them, and then Rockers took care of Aquinas. But in the Holy War, you throw everything out, I guess, right? Well, it's kind of funny because when we talked to Coach Dryling last week, he's like, you know, we outgained Rockers in the first half. We just couldn't punch it in. We couldn't do that. And they're down 20 to nothing. So it's almost like that spilled over. But then they got it going. Um, turned over Bishop Miege, which Bishop Miege has not done. Uh, Mac Armstrong threw a couple interceptions, which he had not done all season long. He fumbled in the fourth quarter, which set up the, the go-ahead drive. Uh, and I'm not trying to pin down on Mac Armstrong. It's a, Everybody has a, has a game like that. And – um, you know, and, and Mac Armstrong fumbled by trying to get extra yards. It's not like he just tossed the ball away. It's not like he's a Missouri tailback trying to score a winning touchdown at Auburn where he just tosses yeah. the ball out, out the back of the end zone. Um, he was trying to get extra yards and trying to extend that clock and do those things. Uh, and it just, you know, he, he fumbled the ball. That just happens sometimes. But, no, outstanding win by Aquinas. And you look at those teams that are sitting in the top three in the K preps, which I vote in. Uh, ranking St. James, Bishop Miege, and uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, all in 4A. I sent my rankings. And and the funny thing about that is is you're not going to make anybody happy, no matter what order you put those three teams in, because yeah. they've all beaten each other in a round robin. Yeah. Um, That's the funny thing. Like, if you're wanting any sort of clarity, right, as to yes. who's going to be the better team in the playoffs, good luck there, because Aquinas beat St. James – or, sorry, Aquinas beat Bishop Miege, Bishop Miege beat St. James, St. James beat Aquinas. Yes, and you know St. James has looked as good as anybody the last two weeks. I mean, you know, they they were up big on a, a good Blue Valley West team who came back and made it thirty five twenty eight. So I put in my my rankings and I said I, I told Matt Gilmore who runs K preps I said I went with a right now approach. What did I think at the minute that I typed it up? And at the minute I typed it up, I said St. James. I don't know if I think that now, but that's how I'm going to look at those teams. It's going to be on a game by game basis on who. You, if you want my number one, you got to play well because there's there's no easy head-to-head to say, well, they will definitely, you know, Miege ought to be, and, it's, and they say the same this week with Miege and St. James Aquinas, you know, so that's, that'll be interesting to see. That that just shows you what rankings mean, because you don't know um, until the playoffs, especially with these three teams now that they're all in 4A. Uh, so it'll definitely, you're going to find out who the who the best one is. One of them's going to have to beat, you know, somebody is going to have to beat somebody twice, or, you know, go through two of them, probably. Uh, um, or be the they probably has to. Yeah, so it's it'll be I, I think it'll shake out the one I'll be on one side of the bracket, the other will be on the other side of the bracket, or the two others will be on the other side of the bracket. So I mean, I'd be shocked if we don't have two more games between those three. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, I, I think so. So that was that was a game that that kind of jumped out at you. Uh, Basically, we got a nice one at Lansing. Um, Olathe South got a nice win over Shawnee Mission Northwest. Um, Olathe North rolled, which leads into this week's game with Mill Valley. Mill Valley rolled. Um, so those were the Kansas side games, Missouri side center, you know, Odessa is a, a solid football team. They handled them, uh, Liberty North decided we're done playing around in the first half, uh, and came out and just blitz Blue Springs out. Blue Springs out through a pick six, uh, then gave up a, another touchdown and then fumbled in their own end. And before they were blinking their eyes, they were down 28, nothing. And yeah. I ran into coach one last night and he goes, he goes, we helped them. Because that's a good football team, and he goes, they were really focused and ready to go, and um, that's that's the Liberty North. And he, you know, he coached against them last year at Park Hill South, and he said, you know, the difference he sees is, is their de- their defense is even better than it was last year. Well, when you turn nine starters off that unit, it's pretty good. So, you know, those are some games that stood out. You know, Rockers beat Blue Springs, um, Staley beats Park Hill South. Now, Park Hill South maybe is not is not quite the team they were last year. Staley's five and two, very quietly. Um, yeah. Got losses to Lee Summit. Steve um, which at the t- can still coach. Yes. Yes, he can. They oh, look no. a lot like Lawrence when he, the first year they, they were there. They, Lawrence wasn't very good. The second year, um, they looked pretty good. They were young, but they looked pretty good. And in the third year, they were really good. Um, so it looks a lot like that. But, the you know, they're five and two. Like I said, their only losses are Billy Summit North, 
and the Lee Summit. At the time, the Lee Summit loss looked a little bad because Lee Summit was a little bit inconsistent, but Lee Summit's looked pretty good the last two weeks. Um, and, and you know, their, their only bad loss is the like a 30 to nothing loss to Lee Summit West when uh, Martinez, their quarterback, is out. So at full strength, Lee Summit's a pretty solid team. And, you know, Staley's, Staley's playing pretty well, too. It's, Lee Summit's at four and three. That That's a fun district. <laughs> and the, yeah. those two districts on the on Missouri side in Class 6 are – You've got your top dogs, and then you know you got like through you know like five or six teams that are all the same. Yeah, plus Staley's got what a two point win and a one point win. So I mean, you, you got a yeah a, a veteran coach like that. They're going to know how to win uh, those close games. Yeah, you know, and, it, and it's the second year of his of his system, and and the, the kids kind of know what to expect. And um, I think that I think that you know I'm not shocked. I, you know that that's that's happening because. The guy can win. He's won a lot of games <laughs> oh, yeah. now on both sides of the state line. Yeah. Now that district four there, it's Liberty North right now in first place, Staley in second, and then three and four Rockhurst ahead of four and three uh, Blue Spring South. But there's Liberty in there and, you know, uh, and Park Hill in there, two and five uh, teams that are can be dangerous. Yeah, it's funny because there's also some head-to-heads in there, you know, Rock beat Blue Spring South, um, Blue Spring South. Uh, beat Park Hill, depending on what Park Hill does. I mean, you know, going down the line, um, you know, like a Blue Spring South and Liberty, they've got it right in front of them these next two weeks. Blue Spring South's got Blue Springs this week. They need to take care of them, and then they play each other the last week of the season. And, you know, I wouldn't be shocked to see every once in a while it happens. You know, it could be Blue Spring South and Liberty playing each other again in week 10. Um, so, you know, uh, both those teams have a lot in front of them. And, and you know, it's it's interesting, and, and it'll be – that'll be a good game next week, I think. Blue Springs, Blue Springs South will be a good game just because uh, they're rivals. Um, they're both playing better. I mean, Blue Springs doesn't have a lot of wins. Uh, I think they just got the two wins to their credit, but they're they're playing a lot better. And and uh, again, talked Coach Wilmus last night, and he said they look, you know, they're 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 not making mistakes they made early in the year. Uh, much just better coached than they were in the past. Yeah, uh, and they're and they're starting to really click in. Who's going to have the the tougher district, Liberty North or Lee Summit North? Because Lee Summit North is down there with the other Lee Summits. And uh, what Ray Peck in the uh, Southwest Missouri and Joplin Nixon Joplin Kickapoo in years past that's been a lot of times a cakewalk for a decent Kansas City team but recently they've had some really good squads they've had some good teams I mean Joplin made the state championship game a few years ago um, I don't know if you talk to people down there the Nix is unbeatable Nixa. and I don't I don't know why we're even playing the state championship game because <laughs> that's what they're saying a couple people down down there think Nix is unbeatable they got a really good tailback they're well coached. Um, I think that at the end of the year, the schedule that the Lee Summit schools and Ray Peck have played are going to benefit them mm-hmm. um, because week in, week out, we see it in the other, you know, everybody else, you know, a Park Hill team. Yeah. And, you know, I, there's, you know, the rankings that, and if you, if you notice that uh, Rock Bridge at six and one got some votes. And I like the guy from in Missouri, Tom Rackers, who's the uh, editor at, at Jeff's, at the Jeff City paper. And he's like, well, they're six and one. Yeah, and their loss is to Park Hill South, who has two wins, and nothing against Park Hill South, but if Rockbridge played in Kansas City, they'd be 0-7. Wow, really? I mean, they've got a schedule that's filled with Sedati Smith Cotton, Jeff City, Capital City. Um, I think they did beat Lutheran St. Charles, who's the defending Class 2 state champion, you know, but... Rockbridge is Class 5? Six, they're six. Okay. Um, So, yeah, it's... I don't know, I'm just... I, I don't. I don't. The, the Rockbridge in back in the day when when people were like uh, they, and they've got talent. There's no doubt. They always have good players. But back in the day, they played, you know, two or three Kansas City teams, including Rockers was on their schedule, and they would play some other. When they were independents, they had a, they had a tougher schedule. Well, they joined a conference. They made this conference out there to to help in scheduling, which is good. You know, they added, you know, the three the three Columbia schools, the two Jeff City schools, and Sedalia. I think is that conference. Well. As I've said before, Jeff City is trash. Um, that that those two teams are not very good. Hickman and is not Hickman's better, but they were like 0 and 10 bad a few years ago. And B- Battle, who was you know won a state championship like their second year, has not has not been good the last few years. And this is probably the worst Battle team that we've seen in a long time. So uh, yeah, there's my rant against Rockbridge. But no, it's uh, I, I think Kansas City's shown. And in, in class six and in class five too, I, I think that 
and and you know possibly not giving enough credit to class five you know oak park got a good win that was a probably a game last week we didn't talk about what a tough tough yeah. physical defensive game and that's that's one of those things i think that our class five teams don't get enough credit for because it's oak park it's grain valley it's north kansas city it's fort osage not known as offensive teams first you know they're known as tough physical defensive teams first and and you know they don't they don't hang 50 at night. And so I think that, that a lot of people stay wide, look at these close scores and go, all oh, these teams aren't very good. When in fact, defensively, I'd stack a lot of those teams up against anybody in the state. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I like Francis Howell. I think they're a decent team. And, you know, Carthage beat Webb City this week. But I, I don't think week in, week out that the that they play the, the schedule, especially now that they've re- moved, you know, they've kind of plucked the, the suburban conference into five leagues. It's more apples to apples now than it's ever been. Mm-hmm. You're playing teams that are just like you. And so it's, there's not the, the playing, either playing a bunch of teams that are bigger than you or better than you or a bunch of teams that aren't as good as you. Because, you know, back in the day, and that, I'm talking about at least some of those teams that won state championships, but, you know, they, they'd step up when they're in class five and go play the Blue Springs one week. And then they'd have two games after that where their starters would play a quarter and a half mm-hmm. and they could get healthy. And then, you know, come the end of the year, you know, that they were like that. I mean, so now you've got everybody playing each other in a more apples to apples type situation, which leads to closer games, which leads to, you know, that looking like maybe these teams aren't as good when in fact they are all pretty good. I, I think I'm back to where I was when I thought at the beginning of the season. I thought class five was going to be pretty good and deep. And, and, you know, even a team like Belton, which has struggled the last few weeks um, because they, their quarterback got hurt and they're still kind of trying to find their way. That's a pretty solid team. Talk about a team like Platt County mm-hmm. that hasn't looked good. They hammered Belton last week, and now they're start. They're young. They're probably a year or two away from being back at that state championship level. But, but that now we're talking about the the fifth and sixth best teams are really pretty solid football teams. Yeah. You know, in Class Five, you have Oak Park. I mean, they got they're six to one right now. Uh, they won that that battle last week 13 to 6 Spectrum Sports did a great job of miking up Ken Clemens and at halftime he said look we're gonna shut these guys out in the second half and win this thing seven to six he was wrong yeah. on the offensive side but he was right on the shut them outside such a good defense there of course North Kansas City has a great defense as well what a big win for Oak Park uh you know Northland pride there they've got the best record of uh any of the Northland schools they've got St. Joe Central coming up next and then Florida State both Winnable games. Yeah, I, that oh, Fort Osage right in an eight and one into this. Uh, that Fort Osage game is huge because if Fort Osage wins this week and then they both go in, Fort Osage had the two losses. Uh, you're talking about uh, possible spot in the district, you know, top of the district uh, rankings. Fort Osage would have all, all Fort Osage would have to do is get that two spot. If they beat them, they they would get that one. Um, that being said, don't overlook San Joe Central. Um, coach Reggie Trotter has them playing oh, their best football. Yep. And yeah, he's the Chiefs coach of the week this week. Um, that's been a long time coming for St. Joe Central. There was a stretch there where they had four different coaches in four years. Hmm. Um, and then Trotter took over. And then in the last, he's been there for five years as the head coach. And really, it took a long time to get building. And that, that's another team you see in apples to apples schedule helping them. And offensively, man, they can flat out score. So that's going to be a great matchup of styles between them and Oak Park. Now, defensively, they're going to give it up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they'll they'll get to the 50s with you. I mean, that's not a problem. But, uh, no, that's going to be a, a good game for Oak Park this week. All right, let's get to the uh, REMAX Big Three games of the week on each side. Let's begin Mid-Buck and East-Buck. I love this one. Mid-Buchanan and East-Buchanan. Um, you have, uh, what, East-Buchanan, they're the uh, defending champs. But they've, they've got the loss. So I guess they're the underdogs going into this one against undefeated <laughs> Mid Buchanan. Well, their losses to a seven and zero class three Savannah team yeah. that they almost came back and won on. So I, I don't know. I, I, I so maybe they're still the favorite. I think they're still the favorite. Uh, you know, Mid Buchanan's won all their games. Uh, they had some. Cl- they've had a couple close ones. Uh, they're still really good teams, uh, no doubt. But it's this is for first place in the district. They're probably going to play again. Um, it's at East Buchanan. I think they'd like to play that game at East Buchanan a second time. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's definitely a a, a spot where the, the, you, you want to get that home field. I mean, I, you know, it, sometimes it doesn't mean anything. Sometimes really good teams can go on the road and get wins. It doesn't really matter. But a lot of times, it you know, just playing at your home place and that, the the vibe from the crowd and all that has a lot to do with it. So yeah, that's a that's a fun game. 
you know, that's a, you know, six and one, seven and oh, mm-hmm. going at it this week, ranked two and three in the state. So that it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, no, that'll be awesome up north there. East Buck and Mid Buck going at it in a huge rivalry game, and one that could kind of, uh, you know, set the table for the state champions in Missouri class one. All right, here we go. Center at Pleasant Hill. These are both undefeated teams, right, Dion? Both undefeated teams, center class four, seven and oh. Stays undefeated here for this one. Ranked fourth in class four, Pleasant Hill, seven and oh, ranked uh, two in class three. I'm going to give the lean to center. I, I just think that they're, I mean, they hang 50 on everybody. Defensively, they're going to be challenged because Pleasant Hill can score. And they got a really good offense. But Pleasant Hill's defense is not the defense it was last year. Last year, Pleasant Hill was like, okay, let's get to 40 and we'll see what happens. Um, the, their defense was really young, but they're a lot better this year. Uh, I think it's going to be a knockdown drag out fight. Um, I think it's going to be, a, I think both these teams want this game as something right before the playoffs to get ready, get things going. At the same time, don't get hurt. Um, play well enough to try and make sure, even if you lose, uh, like for a Pleasant Hill, if they were to lose and not get blown out, they've still got a good shot at staying number one in their district uh, because they'll be able to get bonus points for playing up. Center, probably still going to be number one in their district. They're, and um, they're, di- they're different districts. Yes, they're different classes. They're different classes. Three, so Pleasant, they won't see each other again. So yeah. stay healthy get a good game in and you know definitely want to get that win because you want to get that number one seed uh yeah center at seven and zero in district seven in uh, missouri class four grandview and lincoln prep in that kind of two and three spots right now uh it's crazy i mean after this week we'll have one more week of kind of um of uh of, of time to shuffle and get ready for the playoffs just one more week of the regular season on both sides of the state line uh last but not least university academy at Van Horn, I love this one. University Academies. 7 0. Uh, at Van Horn, great stadium. We were there last week uh, and uh, and a capable team as well. Well, and, you know, Van Horn's got a win over William Crispin. Um, they played Richmond tough. Um, the one I don't, I, I, I don't know what happened. I think their quarter, I think they may have had some injuries. They lost to St. Michael's. Um, they pounded Summit Christian or the ghost of Summit Christian, um, whatever is that that is this year. Um, but no, Van Horn's a good team, and University Academy's a good team. So uh, this is this is a, a, a fun game. Um, hats off to University Academy. They bumped up to Class Three this year for a couple reasons. One, they they went and won their district last year, so they get those bonus points as a charter school, and they they co-op with the Kaufman School. Um, yeah. So it's University Academy Kaufman School. So their numbers went up, which they co opted in other sports they just hadn't in football. And their quarterback is a kid who had never played football before. <laughs> wow, from Kaufman. So. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, Coach Blakemore um, has done a great job taking over for Coach Heffley. Uh, who, Van you know, Horn's still class four, correct? Van Horn's still class four. So, yeah, yeah this is another, you know, class, cross-class uh, game that uh, is good for both teams to play late in the season. All right, on the Kansas side, Baldwin at Bishop Ward. I actually know the district the quarterback very well. My son played baseball with him for a long time. Yeah, he, he's really talented. Um, really their tailbacks fast. are talented. He is fast. <laughs> uh, and Bishop Ward's playing pretty good. They beat San Fe Trail last week. Uh, Baldwin is coached by one Bob Alisher. How oh, nice. Free State. Yeah. And, and you know, they got off to a rough start, 0-3, but they won their last three games. Uh, this is a huge game. I think both of them have a shot to make it out of the district along with Wellsville uh, because it's the old school district type, you know, in Kansas cool. and 1A, 2A, 3A, where you play everybody in your district. And I think the top three make it out. I think it's not, um, not top four. Is it top four? Yeah, top four now. I want to say top so, four. Babe. Top four. Yeah. And well, I mean, hold on. It, it's it's it, they eight districts, the top four defense. Or, uh, 16 districts, sorry. So yeah, it's top four make it out. Top four, okay. Yeah, because they have eight they have eight districts. So there's 32. Actually, let's Just, see here. Should be. I, I've got five team districts here. So that would be 40 in. Three. They don't all make it out though. On on they this only, side. Only, so yeah, you might be make, right. It might be just three. Yeah, top three make it out would be uh, twenty-four, and then maybe at twenty-four from the other side. Uh, I feel like I should know this. I might be thinking. Well, they yeah, because they start a week. No, no, at the same time. They end the same time, so it's going to have to be a thirty. Thirty-two teams are going to have to get there. Yeah, it'll be thirty-two teams to get out. So, needless to say. This is a big game for both these teams. Even if you and I can't figure out the playoff structure, 
in the 1A, 2A, and 3A right now. There's eight. Um, okay, I got it. I got it. I eight got districts. It. We were right. It's there's eight districts across the whole state. I eight. was thinking this was just the east side. Eight districts across the whole state of five, and the four four make four it make out. it to, to get which they should third. make it out. They yes. should make it out. But uh, this is home games. This is all those things because you cross district. I think is how they do it. You know, the one from that plays the four, the two plays the three, and the you know then they split it up. Yes, Bishop Ward should make it out. They're they're at four and two overall, one and one in district play. But there's Osawatomie with already zero and three in district play. Yes, yes, Osawatomie's on the bottom, no doubt. That's who Ball will beat last week. So thirty-two um, of the forty will make it. Well, yeah, they will make they it. they were at forty-eight the previous years, and then That's they went and they they kind of evened it out a little bit okay. between one, two, and three um, and made it about the same amount. I mean, I think one has a couple 16 districts. Yeah. Um, I think that's, I'm, I'm harkening back to when I update the districts on Sunday nights and the post on Monday mornings. Uh, but no, Baldwin and uh, Baldwin and is playing good football right now. Bishop Ward has been playing good football. And I think like I said, they're both going to, they're both going to make it out probably because that's why not very good. Uh, but no, they're, it's a good game, and it's a good game between two teams that, uh, you know, back a few years hadn't had a lot of success. I mean, Bishop Ward's yeah. been the last couple of years, and, and Baldwin same way, too. But it uh, turns out that Bob Lisher guy can coach a little bit, too. Still can, still going. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I didn't know that he was uh, – that he was Yes, really it's his second year there. Yeah. Uh, Shiny Mission Northwest at Shiny Mission East. Uh, I guess both playing on their, what, home fields of Shiny Mission North? Yes, right? yes. Uh, they're both playing on their home field at another school. <laughs> You know, Shawnee Mission East has shown some signs of life lately. Um, they have, and, and yeah, that's, they, 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 they've been able to put up some points on some. some that's kind of what I like about this game. This is kind of a prove it game for both these teams. I mean, uh, you know, trying to get, this is a build a momentum game for both these teams. You know, going into the postseason, I think that's 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 going to be interesting because you know East has shown some flashes. Well, East Northwest East Mission North, North um, yes, uh, put up fifty seven on Shawnee Mission West. Was able to put up thirty two on a really good Gardner. Uh, defense, and then you have Shine Mission Northwest, who's 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 been in a ton of games that yeah. they've uh, they come out on the losing end of. Uh, but I think they're it's it's weird to say because Malik Oedis will be gone next year. I think they're a year away from being really good. Yeah. They're a lot of sophomores. Yeah, they are. You know, I think they'd love to. I love. I think they'd love to sign Malik to a couple year extension. Exactly right. Keep him around because I mean, he could play with these guys are seniors. They'll be pretty good. But uh, no, like I said, I like this game. It's kind of a prove it game. Uh, for both these teams. Uh, and then last but not least, you have on the Kansas side, look, last week in Kansas down in Wichita, you had the power matchup of Derby and Mays. You almost had that replicated up in the Kansas City area because, Dion, there's just one undefeated 4A team, one undefeated 5A team, and one undefeated 6A team, I believe, on the and east the, side in yeah. Kansas. And two of those are playing in gardner Edgerton out of 6A, or sorry, uh, Olay the North out of 6A, and Mill Valley out of 5A. Yes. Yeah, and I, I think it's uh, it's going to be uh, you know this is the first real big test for uh, Olathe North. I mean, well they had they had Gardner a couple weeks ago. Gardner's, got, Gardner's both of their tests really. That's the the yeah. compa- and then, comparison you know there. Uh, Olathe North was in a game until uh, the fourth quarter with uh, Shawnee Mission uh, Northwest. North, in a Northwest yeah, game. they kind of was shoot out back and forth, and then was able to pull away in the late in the fourth. Yeah, so I you know it's going to be it's going to be you know which team's defense is going to Slow down the other team's offense. Both of them are very defensive oriented. Both of them like to run the ball. Um, I would, you know, you. I mean, Mill Valley's a little more. Actually, Gardner's been better at passing the last few years. I mean, they, I mean, not Gardner, early the North. They've been better at passing the ball the last few years. I mean, they're not just run, 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 run. So, no, I think they it's going to be. They've got a lot. I mean, look, they're, they're either late <laughs> the North. They're either six four, three hundred pounds, or about five seven, one hundred forty pounds, <laughs> and can fly. Right? They've got yeah. one of those guys on offense. The two Parish brothers. Uh, are, are so talented. Uh, one of them plays both ways, and the other, the other on, on defense as well. And then you have uh, Arlen Bruce's little brother. They have a tremendous tailback and Porter. Um, and then a, uh, a a new quarterback, a senior who's just a football player. Who's, who's yeah, but, which is kind of what they do at Holy the North. They just find some guy who, you know, we're like thirty. Like uh, what's his face from last year? Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is the quarterback. So uh, yeah, no, it's it's. I think it's gonna be a fun game. Um, and it's it's at Mill Valley, so it'll be a great atmosphere. And Olathe North travels well, so they'll they'll pack the visitor side. And, mm-hmm. um, no, it'll be a, it'll be a good one. I I I'd give the lean to Mill Valley just because I think that they're well. It's at Mill Valley. Look, Mill Valley they they have uh, the, the, this 
the last couple of weeks, they have found themselves a bell cow in Tristan Baker. He's got 430 yards rushing over the past two weeks. And uh, against the late the South, it, it, I think he averaged like five yards a carry. And a lot of times that's like with a, like a 60 yard run and a 40 yard run, a couple three yard losses. Now it was basically, it was basically four to nine yards every single <laughs> play. I mean, it was death by a thousand uh, cuts gets to late the South and then just kept that going with a 200 plus yard performance against Shawnee Mission South. And, and Joel Appleby, if, if you're getting that kind of, you know, chunk yardage on the ground, you know, you, you, you save Hayden Jay, the, the quarterback, in your back pocket for another day. Yeah. He, can, he can beat you over the top uh, throwing the ball. The less, the less times Hayden has to drop back and throw the ball and expose himself to, I think they still are allowed to touch the quarterback in high school football. We know they're not in the pros. Unless, Listen, unless it's, it's funny. This isn't, this isn't hyperbole here. There is no other level where you allowed to you are allowed to hit the quarterback in any other position, basically either than at the high school level. Yeah. Now, I mean, college targeting you're kicked out for a game, and if it's second half, part of the next game, right? In the NFL, it's you know it's a junior high dance to escort. You know, it's that's how you have to you know. Um, Not that we want to go down that back. rabbit hole, but uh, I love the Max Crosby face mask to face mask with Mahomes that nobody even said boo about that yeah, but Chris, Chris Jones, Jones would have Chris Jones would have been shot dead on the field I think if he'd have done that I mean you know it's like, I don't or, or how about uh, Mahomes getting flung down even flung harder down harder than, than Brady. Brady yeah and, and by the way and I think you're you're with me on here none of those should be roughing the passer or or even the Max Crosby Mahomes that yeah. shouldn't be that I don't think that should be a flag that's just that's just football it's all yeah. just football I'm clamoring for can okay, keep all those flags in your in your pocket um, but well, we don't want to go down that hole. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah, end on that. But Hayden, <laughs> Hayden, uh, Hayden is so good. Uh, and it's uh, it's kind of a shame in that like Mill Valley really hasn't had outside of Gardner for a little bit a game this year to where yeah. like he's been forced to show how good he is. Now maybe he'll, they'll, he'll get there on Friday night. Um, but he's he's a guy if he was throwing at twenty five times a game would be probably one of the front runners for the uh, Simone award. Yep. Yeah. And we'll talk more Simone next week. We'll be more in depth than that. I'm um, getting ready to start releasing some Simone watch in all the categories, but uh, we'll dive into that next week. Yeah. Leave there's people a, wanting uh, more. Yeah. Now, there's a website for that, right? We can go. Yes. Yes. The Simone awards.com. That's cool. Got a great interview with one Evan Bame up on there right now. A little podcast with him. So check that out. The uh, only offensive line. Um, member to ever win a Simone award. Have we had it. We haven't had a defensive. Nope. Only He's the player, only right? non quarterback some that played receiver. both ways. Only non quarterback receiver running back. Oh, we had a tight end, right? Kaufman one. Does Kaufman tight, tight end, end or was he? He was receiver more in high school. Receiver, tight end, receiver. I mean, so yeah. So pretty much every unit on offense, someone had that first uh, defensive yes. player. Uh, awesome. Well, I know you got to get Dion. Any any final words here on uh, Snap Tackle Pod? No, it's a it's gonna be a fun week. I'm looking forward to it. No doubt, a lot of good games. Uh, a lot of good games. Check out uh, PrepsKC.com for all the scores, stories uh, over the weekend, uh, big plays from big games, all that stuff. And then check out KSHB 41 for our Under the Lights show that starts about 10:15 every single Friday night with uh, highlights of the best games from around the metro area. Enjoy your games, Dion. Enjoy your basement and your coffee and your dog and all that stuff. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy like a, a nap or maybe I'll, I'll walk my dog. Maybe this afternoon I'll grab a nap. We'll see. Okay, there we go. For Dion, I'm Mick. We'll see you next time on Snap Tackle Pod.